Today I'm with Gavin Gwynn, the Welsh lightweight area champion and British and Commonwealth title challenger. And we're going to be having a chat about his uh, life and career today. So thank you for uh, taking the time to talk with me today. Gavin, yeah, no problem. No problem. No problem. So, I mean, you know, in the beginning, um, like you and boxing basically starting at the beginning, how did you like first get into boxing in the beginning? Where did it start for you? Um, as a kid, really, um, it was it was a gym right by me, uh, walking distance. T took me about five minutes to walk there. Um, so a load of us um, rocked up there, like just turned up, had like half hour training, and then do that like every couple of weeks. We would just go in there and just have a cup, cup, couple of rounds on the bag mm -hmm. and things like that. And then, um, and then like that was about. 10 to 12 I was about 10 to 12 we'd done that and then went away from there for a bit um, and then come back when I was about 14 I had a couple of couple of weeks of good training um, I started sparring and things like that and that's what I loved like uh, the sparring I, sometimes I would only turn up when I knew we were sparring like so I didn't really like the training bit um, and then um, I left it alone like for maybe three to four years um, obviously, I was at, at that age. I was going out drinking. It was girls involved, and <laughs> went on the wrong path, sort of thing. And um, yeah, one day, uh, just I just decided that I want, wanted to give another crack, and uh, went back. And um, I really gave my all every time I went training. I was um, I was trying to improve myself and get better, get fitter. And then um, my tr my old amateur trainer Richard Bebb said, um, "How would you like to fight?" And I was like, "Ah, oh, it's busting at the chance. Like I couldn't can't wait." Like, and uh, he said, "Look, we'll get your medical sorted, and um, hopefully get you out um, in the next couple of weeks." So, um, yeah, I think that was uh, I was about nineteen twenty at the time, and uh, my first fight was in the final of the novice championships, the North of Five. Uh, category. Um, I lost on a split decision, but I thought they won it um, against a, a guy from the army. And then um, I went. I, I went on to win um, nine or ten fights. Then after that, um, I won the the five to ten um, novice championships during that time, uh, beating a boy from uh, Saint Joseph's. I can't remember his name. Uh, Nathan. Oh, I'll come back to me later on in the thing now. Uh, yeah, so I won the um, uh, five to ten novice championships, um, and then they had a couple of club shows then, um, which I re remained unbeaten till I think it was my seventeenth or eighteenth fight. Uh, I went into the open championships. Uh, I won in the prelims, um, and then I won in the quarters. And then I faced um, Zach Davis in the semi-finals then, um, which I come up short. Um, I thought they'd done enough on the day. So did a lot of people. Um, and then after that, I had a couple of, um, couple of um, club shows, uh, winning three or four, I think it was. And then Colin Jones um, rung me up one day, um, who was the head of the Welsh team. Uh, to come down for sparring. So on on the weekend, it, it was the lead up for the Commonwealth Games. I can't remember what year. It must have been the. Uh, it was the year Fred Evans, Andrew Shelby, Joe Cordina. Can you remember what year that is? Um, I would have been. Was it about twelve, thirteen, or was it or was it earlier than that? Because I think because I know. Um... Uh, I'm trying to think now. Well, I mean, Fred was in the Olympics. Oh, yeah, it might be a bit later because Fred was in the Olympics only 2012. That was 2012, yeah. I think it was 2014, I think it was. Yeah, a bit later on, yeah. Around, uh, sounds right to me, that does. Yeah, and um, so I went down there for sparring. Um, obviously, I sparred um, Zach. Then loads of rounds with Zach helped him out for the, for the tournament. And I managed to spar um, Joe Cordina as well. Um, and I think I'm sure I'd done a couple of rounds with Sean McGoldrick. I'm sure I did. Um, 
And then ever since then, um, they had me back training in squads on the weekends. Um, and then after the Commonwealth Games, I went into the Open Championships and won it. Um, that was a, probably one of my proudest moments as an amateur, winning the Welsh Vest, the Open Class Welsh Vest. And then um, what happened after that? I think I went to Spain. I went to Spain with Wales then. That was my first um, my first international tournament then. Um, I, th- I lost to... Uh, in the quarterfinals or the semi-finals, I think, no, it was the quarterfinals. I lost to uh, the Spanish lad. I gave an absolute tune in as well. Colin Jones, he was like, what have we got to do to get a, wi- a win? I dropped him with a body shot in the second round and everything. And I honestly, I smashed the lad. And um, yeah, I, th- I think he went to the semis or the final and got stopped in the stopped in the final. I'm sure it was. Um and then we come home from Spain. I got picked to represent Wales against England in, um, I think it was Harryford or something like that. And um, I went up there, um, stopped him, stopped the boy with a body shot. Um, that was that was one of my main punches as an amateur body shot. Um, and then it was a load of other tournaments. We went to like multi-nation tournaments and things like that. And then I turned pro. And then I turned pro then after, I think it was one after one of the tournaments I got robbed in the final. Um, can't remember what tournament it was. Um, I just thought, why am I doing this for a medal when I could be getting paid for this sort of thing? Mm. Yeah. That was, but that, was a, that was the change. Okay. Um, but I loved, I loved boxing for my country. That was like, massive achievement for me for a guy who only had like 20 odd fights and I'm boxing for my country in these multi-nation tournaments it was it was brilliant I loved I loved every second of it all the, all the training camps and everything it was it was brilliant like yeah and then when you turned pro um obviously what was it like sort of adapting obviously to the paid ranks you know things like that I mean what was what was the changes like and what were some of your early fights like um from that point of view um, I probably I the the style I boxed at was like Andrew Malawa. I'd go from the first bell. I wouldn't stop punching till the till the last second. Like um, for the three rounds, I I I'm all, I was always fit. I was the, the fittest guy. Like so, so that won me most of my fights because they try and keep up with me when my amateur fights. They try and keep up with me in the first round, and then they'd be flagging in the second round. Then I'd just take it to them in the third round, sort of thing. Um, so. My style just like gelled with the pro pro game. Um, everyone knows I'm tough, tough as they come. I can take, <laughs> I can take more shots. So like, I was just head down. But and then Tony Borg, I joined up. Um, I linked, I linked up with Tony Borg, and um, he had a he had a sit down with me and he said, "Oh look, you're not gonna have a very long career if you're boxing like that." The way the way I was boxing. Um, he didn't want to take me on at first, him and Billy Reynolds. Um, I went down there for sparring and um, I sparred with Gary Buckland and I just, me and Gary Buckland just stood in the middle of the ring just hitting lumps of each other. <laughs> and uh, yeah, he said, um, you're not going to last long if um, the, way you, the way you're boxing sort of thing. Uh, so I, I kept on going back, um, sparring and he was teaching me all different things, what to do and... Um, yeah, and the, just the rest is um, history, as they say. But yeah, the rest is history. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, obviously, you've now. I mean, you know, having challenged for the for the British and and the Commonwealth, you've sort of gone up from the small hall shows, and you've you know you've got to like a very high level, and and obviously yeah. proved you, um, you know, you belong at that class. I mean, did you always believe that you'd get there, like in in those sorts of early those early fights? I mean, did you always sort of have that dream? Um, yeah, I, I, I've always had a dream. Right? Like, obviously, every boxer wants to be a world champion, do not they? Like, you've seen loads of interviews of me saying, oh, um, yeah, I dream to be British champion. Yeah, I, I won that British title belt. But obviously, my dream is much, much higher than that. But I think you've got to take every, every step as it comes. Not looking past anyone, not looking further than what, what tomorrow will bring, sort of thing. So. Yeah. Um, 
uh, turning over as a pro, I thought, um, yeah, I thought I'd be British champion at least. But then the people I've been sparring who's been at world level and I'm, I'm mixing it up and um, it's been like tit, tit for tat sort of thing. Like it's been, um, it's been quite close to sparring. Like I've been all around the world sparring. So it's, and sparring world class fighters and giving them as good as you get in, like sort of thing. So, yeah. Um, that's that's what gives me confidence, in knowing that, that I'm, I'm not just a British level fighter. I know I'm going to be on, go beyond um, British level because obviously I lost to Joe Cordina in my last last but one fight, but it was a close fight, and he's he's on about challenging for world titles in two or three fights. So that just shows the level I'm at as well. Yeah, it does. It does 100. Yeah. Um... And yeah, I mean, in you know, I definitely think you you've got a lot of big fights ahead of you, Gav. I mean, you know, I, I've always yeah. believed that, and that's something that I'm definitely going to touch on, you know, a bit later on. But yeah. um, obviously, as a pro, I mean, I, I'm skipping over a few of those early fights. I mean, I know that the, the first fight I saw live was um, I, Ibra Reyes, which would, would have been maybe your sixth or seventh. I'm not sure. Um, no, it was only my fourth fight that was. Oh, there, oh, there we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the, in the motor point in Cardiff. When that's I... that's the one. That's the one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but I was following like your career before that as well. But then yeah. you know, moving on to like the Welsh title because obviously that was you know the first title you got hold of as a pro and things like that. I mean, obviously I was there ringside, so I got an yeah. insight into it. But I mean, um, what was your mentality going into that fight how did it feel to win just tell us a little bit about your your Welsh title win basically yeah um I think it was either my six six fight I think it was I think it was my six fight so quite early on in my career I was challenging for a, um, a title belt over 10 rounds you don't you don't see that very often do you it's only like the the special the special ones but like who's been to the Olympics or whatever else but um yeah, it was um, brilliant when when the phone went for the fight because um, obviously I've sparred Henry loads of times up in Geffy Gear Gym. So when the phone went uh, and it was going to be my hometown in Merthyr, uh, I was buzzing from the from the moment he said he announced it. I, I got goosebumps now <laughs> thinking about it. Yeah, so it was like a, a a massive massive just achievement to to be challenging for a, a Welsh title um, professional belt. Um, so in the build-up, um, I, w- I was bricking it a bit because obviously it was over 10 rounds and I was, you doubt yourself. Everyone has doubts. Um, I didn't know if I was going to be fit enough. So he'd, he'd come off like two or three wins on the road, which is which is hard to do on the road against unbeaten prospects. So I knew he was going to, I knew he was going to be fit. I knew he was going to be hungry. And um, that was his like sort of world title. If you, if, um, yeah. 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 It, it, so, on the build-up, I was just training hard, harder than ever before. Like I was get, I was getting up like four o'clock in the morning. That's when I started um, training two or three times a day, um, while whilst working as well. So, working eight hours a day as well. So, um, I just, I just put everything into the training camp, and um, yeah, it was just. It was an unbelievable feeling walking out in front of, like in my hometown, it was rammed as well. The place was jam-packed. I think it sold out, yeah, it was um, it was class feeling. And uh, it wasn't the best, the best of fights by myself. It was a good fight for the fans. Um, it was an all-out war, wasn't it, for 10 rounds. Yeah. Um, I fell over in the first round. I fell over, like I tripped over. I can remember it was like tw- 10 seconds or 20 seconds. And I was like, oh, shit. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I thought I got it. I, I I just tripped over, and um, I got up, wiped myself down, and it was. Um, I think the occasion got to me. Obviously, it was my first title fight in front of my own fans. I wanted to impress. I think it got to me, and I just wanted to impress the fans, and I just stayed on his chest instead of boxing him long. Um, but it was a good fight for the fans to watch. I think we come running up for fight of the year in the Welsh area awards. Um, uh, the, the feeling when um, the scorecards been written out—they've never, 
and well, I don't think I've I've ever felt a feeling like it in my life. Like it was, I just started crying in the ring, but I, I like jumped up and like wiped my tears. I was like, I'm fine. <laughs> oh, that's brilliant. Yeah, it must, be, it must be amazing. And yeah, and obviously having been there myself, it, it was an incredible fight. I mean, it was, and I know obviously you're saying maybe, maybe it wasn't your best, but honestly to watch, it was just back and forth, you know, every round, you're absolutely, absolutely yeah. brilliant. Um, well, that's, what, that, that's what Welsh title fights mean to, 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 to Welsh boys. Like, and we both give it 100%. And fair play to Henry, like he, he's, um, I think he's retired now. It was a, it was a cracking fight and um, probably he'll go down go down as one one of the best fights for a Welsh title so yeah I think so I think so yeah and I mean then obviously um after that um skipping I can skipping over a few fights because obviously because you've just come off the big one I, I do want to get to um the British and Commonwealth and I know you had an eliminator in there that was yeah. actually yeah let's talk about that I mean let, first of all let's talk let's talk about your eliminator I mean that was that was a very good win um you know over an unbeaten um, twelve and zero at the time, but me unbeaten. Twelve and zero. Um, I, yeah, I was twelve and zero when he was thirteen and zero. Oh yeah, there we are. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah so, so what yeah. was that fight like in terms of uh, in terms of the preparation itself and how everything went? Um. Yeah, we got we got a phone call. Um, I think it was like seven weeks before they were putting a tally show on in um, Newport, and. Uh, I was having a chat with my manager and he was uh, saying we've got a couple of good fighters um, we're just going to try and um, sort out which which one we're going to fight sort of thing um, and then he came up with the name uh, Myron Mills so I had a look at his record unbeaten kid that's what I wanted I want I, I want to be in big fights I don't want to be in fights I'm fighting bums if I'm selling hundreds and hundreds of tickets I, I want to get I, I want to get to um, t- uh, more titles, so I want to be fighting the best sort of thing. So I was like, yeah, sh- straight away, as soon as, he, as soon as he mentioned it, I was like, yeah, I won the fight. Um, and then he mentioned it was going to be a, a title eliminator for the British title. I was like buzzing over that, like it was amazing. Like, um, So I had a word with Tony. He said, look, this guy's, this guy's special. He knows um, Clifton Mitchell, so... Tony Tony knows him very well, and um, he said this guy's very special. You don't have to take this fight. Um, this we could we could go down another route sort of thing. And I said no, I, I, I'm not I'm not ducking anyone. I won the fight. He had like six knockouts. He was supposed to be in a puncher. Um, well, he was a puncher, but but um, yeah. Um, so I started training camp like seven weeks before. I, I'm always in the gym anyway, but that was like my my start date of training camp. Um, uh, I had a load of sponsors on board, so I, I really, I trained probably two, three weeks out of the seven weeks full time. So that was my first chance of not working, just training. I really like the, the benefits from that. It was, it was unbelievable. Obviously you could see it in the fight. Like, um, it's like, I think, Working and training for a massive fight, it just drains you. Like, it just it, it it does. Now I don't think I could do it now. Work and train at the same time. Obviously, I can work when I'm not not training for a fight. But working and training, you're not you're not getting your best out of yourself. Like you're going to the gym at six o'clock in the night. You you're already drained anyway. You've been working all day grafting, so you're not giving your yourself. You you're not giving it hundred percent sort of thing. So. Yeah, so I felt the benefit from that, and then going into the going into the weigh-in, um, Tony was telling me all these things. Oh, he he been sparring uh, Jack Catrall, give him good rounds. I was I was I was, I was shitting myself a bit. I was like, oh, fuck <laughs> it. Well, I got myself in bed. and this was going into the weigh-in sort of thing. But I think he done that. I think Tony done that to give me a bit of nerves because I'm never like on the build-up. I I'm never nervous like. I'm not. I'm not nervous at all. I'm. I'm shitting the brick in the changing rooms. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I want to run out today, but like in the build-up, I'm not. It's no. It's no nerves whatsoever. I just. I love every bit of training. Like I. Like when I finish training, I'm like, oh, what can I do for the rest of the day? And I'm thinking of things, what to train next and other things. But um, so in the way in. 
uh, we go to the weigh-in. Uh, that was in Newport, held in Newport as well. Um, jumped on the scales and uh, Clifton Mitchell was going uh, shouting out, you're not going to get the knock the fuck out. All this and that, right? I was like, Phew. I'm not getting knocked. I'm not getting knocked out now. But you've had it shouting at me all this abuse and that. But you were kids having an eye in. <laughs> that's what's going through my. That's what's going through my head. Like I, I wanted to have a fight there in the way in. Obviously, starving and thirsty and someone shouting at you. Do you know what I mean? So, um, and after the after it as well, we jumped. We jumped off the scales. I seen he had an interview then. Uh, Myron had an interview straight after with um, Carrion Gibbs. Yeah. Uh, Gibbons. And um, he said, yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna knock Gavin Gwynn out. I'm going to win inside the distance. And I was just, it was just all in my head. I kept cool about it as well. I thought, no, I'm just going to use this as positive energy sort of thing. Um, and then so fight day come. I had a nice full belly to put on about. 14, 15 pound, I think I did. So I, I rehydrated the right way, which I didn't in for the Henry uh, James fight. Um, I've drank pop and things like that. Um, but this time, what I done was I had my uh, um, rehydration drinks. I had all the uh, right amount of protein in my body, the right amount of carbs. I was timing when I was eating and what I should be eating. So I'd done it all perfect. I woke up in the morning feeling, well, feeling a million dollars. I thought, right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to win tonight. I'm going to do it in style. And uh, yeah, we got in the changing room, started warming up, felt awesome on the, on the pads. And uh, so the time was to come to walk out for the, for the fight and um, the, my music started playing. The crowd was going wild. It was rammed in it. Like, um, so I walked out, um, r- bell rang and he hit me with the first couple of shots. I thought, shit, he can't punch. He was hit me with jabs and, was, and they were fast. They were like a boom. It was hit my head back and I was thinking, oh my God, I'm in for a night there, yeah. And um, I think it was the second or third round. He hit me on, on my jaw and I like clicked and I thought it broke my jaw like I couldn't move my jaw I thought oh my god I broke my jaw beer and it was like 10 seconds to go I went back to the corner and I didn't say anything so I thought if they notice they're just going to pull me out and I'm not getting pulled out to this fight so I didn't have any water he was like, he was like do you want water I was like nah <laughs> I don't want water sort of thing <laughs> um, so like 30 seconds into the next round, he hit me again, same place, and it like clicked back in. And I was like, I could feel my jaw moving. And I thought, right. I sat there and I thought, you're having it now, but <laughs> 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 you've had your chance now. So I just started laying into him. And uh, yeah, it was quite easy from like the sixth round onwards. I was like, I think if it, it would have been a 12 round fight, I think I would have stopped him. Uh, in the tenth round, he was just flagging. I was all over him, hitting him with big shots. I think yeah. if it if it was a, t- a twelve round fight, I would have took him out today. You know, it's interesting. It's interesting to hear that about that fight actually, because t- to be honest, I noticed the same thing. Obviously, being ringside, I noticed that after uh, after that round, you know, you started stalking him and you were tra- and you were landing a lot of shots. And, I, and it like the whole tempo of the fight, like it just switched up. And I was thinking, well, you know, that's cool. What's happening? Obviously happy for you, but I was thinking, what's happening there? And that about the jaw, you know, I mean, so it's a little off topic, but it's interesting. I don't know, know what it was. It must have like, I don't know if it, I don't know if he dislocated it or what, but it like popped back in. But then the next few days after the fight, I couldn't eat anything. I, I, I had a job to open my mouth. So I was just, normally I'd, I'd go for a pizza, pizza or something like that, but I couldn't eat eat nothing so I was just drinking things and I I couldn't open my mouth I couldn't chew anything it was it hurt for like a week after it did yeah but it healed up okay obviously in the end yeah it healed up fine like it it was no broken bones or anything like that because I was I was moving my jaw around just in case I thought ah I thought that's the worst now I got got, got to go and have pins or something in my jaw but I, I left going off from the hospital. I'm not very good with needles and things like that. So I, I, I don't like going to hospitals at the best of times. So I just thought, nah, I'll just wait to see if, if, it, get, if it does get any worse. I'll, I'll have to go up this sort of thing. Yeah. Well, I mean, in a minute now, I'll get to obviously the, 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 you know, the big fight so far. But before that, um, 
you've touched on a few like really good things there, Gab, to be honest, like including um, the mental preparation, which is which is something. Um, I mean, how do you like mentally prepare? Because I mean, people talk about the physical preparation, and you and you're known for being very, very dedicated in the gym. You know, I mean, like you say, like you said yeah. earlier, you know, very, very fit, very dedicated, improving every fight. But I mean, how do you handle like the mental side of it? Do you feel any pressure or, or anything? Or I mean, what um, happens? It's just, it just comes probably with years of of training for fights, and obviously the first couple of fights you have. Um, your nerves do get a better though. But you just you just manage them, you try and manage you you can't manage um to a degree where you're you're not shitting yourself in the change room sort of thing. It's it, that's just you, it's good to have nerves. If, if you see if a fighter haven't got nerves in the changing rooms, I don't think I don't think he's gonna perform well. You need them nerves to make you perform better. Mm-hmm. Um it's, yeah, I think it just comes with years of fighting um, and you just learn to deal with it as best as you can. You, you'll never get rid of them. But, yeah, that's the only way I can explain it. It's just years of, like, fighting and just going through that process over and over, like, yeah. fight after fight sort of thing. It makes Obviously, sense. Obviously, it's different, but you just, you've got to take it as it comes sort of thing. Mm. So pra- practice makes perfect, basically, and you yeah, know, just yeah. just keep, keep practicing and yeah, and not not let, let it get you. Yeah, like take a step back, have a breather, have a think about it, then yeah. go again, sort of thing. Which which does lead me to another thing, Gav. I mean, obviously, you know, you've got like a very positive attitude I would say you know and, and like what I mean by that is like um, obviously even like when I see you and stuff like you're always positive you're always very upbeat and stuff and even having had like like some success now I mean you're very humble and everything like that I mean how do you sort of keep like like such a positive um, mindset and, and everything like that um, I think it's just a brave face to be honest with you but some days I'm feeling like shit but was like I don't see the point of walking around moping, and it's not going to help you out, is it? At the end of the day, like um, after after my first loss, um, I broke down in tears. I broke down in tears. Not going to lie, I was crying like a little girl in the changing rooms. Um, and everyone was there. It was like about five, five, six of us. And I thought, Do you know what? Just it's done now. It is what it is. But then Chris said to me, he said, "Oh." Every loss I had, I cried every time he said. So it was like cheered me up, and then it put me in a better mood, sort of thing. Um, yeah, I just I don't see the point of being miserable. Um, you only got one life. Try and try and make the best of it. It's no point moping around. If if something don't go right, you try a different way. It's no point moping around and feeling sorry for yourself. It's not. It's not good. Like. Mm. I like that. I like I like that a lot. I mean. Um... I'm the same, but I mean, you know, it's things like that that I think will really help people watching this. You know what I mean? That yeah, you know, like, like yeah. hearing, you know, good solid advice like that. Yeah. I think. And I mean, um, the other thing that that sort of leads on from from all of those is obviously, you stay, you know, very very dedicated. Um, I mean, you know, everyone knows that. And and the other thing is that you sort of um, improve every fight and things. I mean, talk talk us through a little bit about like your motivations about like. What I'm asking is, you know, what is your why for boxing in the first place? And also what keeps you going, um, you know, year after year to keep chasing those dreams, basically? Um, I think it all started, like, why I wanted to um, achieve big things. Um, I went into the Welsh Championships. Um, they didn't think I was going to win it. Everyone was saying, oh, no, nah, he's not good enough. Uh, he's just a brawler. He's not a boxer. He's never going to do anything. And that's just stuck in my head. Um like a couple of people, when when we've gone on sparring as an amateur, said, "Oh no, he's not going. He's not going to be any good." Sort of thing, and it's just like stuck in my head. And I just like ever since, like even training now, I keep on thinking about what they said, and I think, "Nah, I'm going to prove 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 you wrong." Sort of thing. Mm-hmm. It was um, yeah, it was it's it's one of them, and obviously I've got a baby boy, so I want to I want to achieve big things, so he can look back on on maybe my career and say, look, my daddy was a uh, champion of so-and-so, champion of whatever, and uh, be proud sort of thing. So you can, you can take the belts to school, like show and tell, like it'd be, it'd be brilliant. Like, um, yeah, and I just, I want to uh, secure my family as well. Like my boy, I just want, like financially, 
that's an, that's another big big thing for me. Um, I know a lot of fighters say, "Oh no, I don't want the money," and I wouldn't be doing it if if, <laughs> if it yeah. wasn't the money. I'm not get punched in the face for free, man. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Yes, you know, I, I, I want to secure him. Like I, I want to buy him a house. I don't want him. I don't want him after. Um, obviously, I want um, him to graft when he's older and make his his own decisions. But I'd, I'd like to give him a helping hand along the way, like sort of thing. Well, fam, family is a key. Is very much a key motivation. That's that's good. Yeah, it's my, know, it's, I, th- I think that's one of the big factors for me. Um, Especially like in training camp, because obviously I don't get to see him a lot. I don't, I don't, I don't get to see my missus. Don't get to see the baby. Like I'm training in the morning. Then maybe I'll have an hour home. Um, I have a bit of food, and the baby's in nursery, so I won't get to see him. And then I'm back out the door to go to my S and C or do my run or whatever else. And then just get a couple of hours. Or even if like I'm on training camp, and then we go away for a couple of weeks, I don't see him. Like, um, but I like being home. I'm a, a, co- a quite homely person. I like being around my family. So I could never go away to camp. I know a couple of people do, but I could never do that. That's where I'm happiest. I'm happiest when I'm in the house. I think a happy fighter is a dangerous fighter, to be honest with you. Yeah. 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 I, it makes a lot of sense. It makes a lot of sense, Kev. And I mean, um, moving on, like, obviously, on to the, the British um, and Commonwealth. Um, fight itself because that, that's where I was sort of heading earlier. Um, like I say, I mean, you know, massive fight to be part of. Um, I really, you know, really personally, really think you know you, you box very, very well. I, and I know it wasn't your night. Um, and I also know there's, you know, there's a lot, like a lot of big fights still ahead. But I mean, talking about that fight, I mean, can you sort of talk us through a bit about um, just a bit about the fight in general, like the preparation for it, and also what the actual night was like and, and everything as well, please? Yeah, um, yeah. So we got a phone call, same again. Got a phone call. I was buzzing. I was like, yeah. I, I said I'm giving up work. That's the first thing I said, right? I'm giving up work. I'm I'm hundred percent just. I don't care what, about money and things like that. Um, I, I said to my father, I said, don't tell anyone. We wasn't allowed to announce it for like two, three weeks, I think it was. So he said, um, it was probably biggest cards and the best fight there, pound for pound at the time. Um, so the, obviously Sky wanted to announce it. So I said to my father, look, Dad, I'm not, um, I'm not coming to work Monday. I'm, I'm off now for seven or eight weeks, it was. He said, what do you mean? <laughs> I said, oh, look. I, I got a fight. I, I didn't even tell my father. I didn't even tell my father. I was like, I got a fight, but I can't say anything because it's uh, against my co- my contract and things like that. So he's like, yeah, fine. Do what, do what you got to do. Um, it is what it is. So training camp started. Um, I went out to LA for two weeks. I was flying anyway in the gym. Um, I was training like three, four weeks before that. Um, yeah, so... I was flying in sparring. Uh, sparred awesome out in LA. Weight was coming off um, very good. Come home. I had one crap spar, I think, the whole, the whole seven or eight weeks. Just felt drained sort of thing. And, um, yeah, so my camp was flying. I got to, like, two weeks out. Uh, obviously, you have your check raise and things like that. Um... And then uh, fight week come, come round. So we went up to London, done the public workout. It was all like, um, that's the first time I've ever done anything like that in front of the, tele- uh, the TV cameras and things like that. So it was, a, it was a bit of a buzz, but I didn't want to try and show it. I, didn't, I wasn't like walking around. I just tried to stay calm as possible, just trying to absorb it all, like good energy and just like um, be positive and things like that. And um, yeah, so we done the the uh, the open workout. We done the press conference, and then obviously the weigh in was in. Um, oh, I can't remember what market it was. It was like an open market. So yeah. I walked out. I was feeling million dollars. I woke up in the morning. Normally, um, making nine stone nine is quite hard for me. I'm a big like big tonight. So normally, I wake up in the morning. I gotta lose a couple of pound. So I woke up in the morning, I was nine stone nine, bang on the button. I thought, oh, 
I was loving it. I was loving it. I could just chill out now till weigh in. Um, weigh in come, um, I was a couple ounces under, so I had a sip of water before I, ju- I jumped on the actual official scales. So I jumped on the scales, announced me, um, what's, what's his name, the guy with the dreadlocks? The, oh, Demante, isn't it? Yeah, David Demante. Yeah. Yeah, so he announced me um, from Murph Tidwell, Wales, and I was like, yeah, buzzing and all that, all the crowd cheering. Um, it was a good moment, that in itself. I had the face off, um, and then we done like a little interview after, and then chilled out for the rest of the day, and then the, the time come then to go to the O2, I, I, I didn't, I have never been in there before in my life, and uh, so we had cars picking us up all week, it was like chauffeurs picking us up, jumped in the car, it, we went like under the O2, come out right by the changing rooms, um, TV cameras straight to my face, as I was jumping out the car, I was like, what? What's this all about? Yeah, so I, jumped, I was just grinning year to year. I couldn't keep it off my face, like sort of thing. I was just buzzing about the old, old experience it was. It was just, it was class. And um, yeah, so I had, we walked in and I said, oh, I'm going to have a little look about, um, check out the arena and things like this. There was a couple of fights going ahead. I'm on the end of the car, like four round fights and things like that. So I had to sit down, had to watch a couple of fights, just chilled out. Um, uh, yeah, and uh, and then down to the fight den itself, walking out the the ring entrance was amazing. I was, I was standing at the tunnel and I thought, no, that that, that thought come back into my mouth, like um, into my mind, like the 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 people saying that oh, he's not not going to do nothing. I'm standing there in the O2, live on um, pay per view Sky Sports again. Yeah, just shoving it all back in your face, sort of thing. <laughs> but uh, yeah, standing in the music come on, I thought, yeah, I'm, this is my night. This is my night, sort of thing. I just had that feeling. I just, I felt the old way through camp. I was just, I felt a million dollars. It was only the one spa I just, just mentioned that they had um, shit spa. But um, the bell went first round. Um, the, the plan was to work him out the first round, see what he, see what he was going to do. Um, obviously, he was going to box on the back foot. He's he's a mover, he's sharp. Um, and I, um, I, the first round, just he, like his speed, done me over. He was like catching me with big shots. But it wasn't hurting me. He was just like fast, fast shots. His movement, more than anything, got me. Um, like his, his head movement. But then like, I think it was like the third round. I started finding my jab and I was finding little shots. I thought, all oh, right, I'm getting myself back into the fight. Yeah, I had like a, I maybe had a good fourth round. It could have, it would have been even if it was, do you know what I mean? Um, fifth round, I had a good fifth round. Like the, the mid, the mid, the mid rounds, I had a couple of rounds I would have given for myself. And then the later rounds, it could have gone either way. Um, but at the final bell, um, like the 12th round, before the 12th round, sorry, Tony Tony said to me, look, you're a couple of rounds down. Um, try and catch him with a big shot. Don't get caught with your, don't get caught yourself. I said, look, I can do 15 rounds. I'm, I, I, I was that fit. That it, I, just, I, just, I just thought, ah, he's just too quick for me in the end. Um, his head moment, he was just mm-hmm. too good for me. Um, mm-hmm. It was just... I just had to admit they like sort of thing at the end of the bit at the end of the, the fight it was a good fight to watch but I knew I'd lost by like two or three rounds I thought it was quite close but I thought he just nicked it like the, he started a bit quicker and the, a couple of rounds in between he nicked so yeah it was a close fight and um, I just yeah it was it was just one of them it, I just wasn't good enough at the end of the day it just wasn't good enough to beat him like sort of thing but I mean you you must have at the same time taken away like quite a few positives from the fight I mean I know it, obviously it wasn't the result you wanted and everything but but do you think like you know a fight like that sort of gives you good experience for the future do you think oh yeah massive massive experience because obviously um, that was my first time fighting on like um, uh, well, even it was pay per view, like not even Sky Sports. It was a pay per view event. So, and um, yeah, it was like 
I, I took a lot of positives. Like um, Adam Smith, we jumped out the ring after and had a chat on Sky and things like. And um, Adam Smith said to me, "Look, that's you, you'll get your shot again." That was a brilliant fight. And then Ed Yearn as well said, come up to me and said, "Well, what a fantastic fight! Uh, we didn't we didn't expect didn't expect that. I I th- I, th- I think they expected an easy night's work, like, but." Um, yeah, and then um, Eddie texted me in the morning and said, um, "Well done on a fantastic, uh, well done on a fantastic fight. Hopefully, um, we can work together in the future, sort of thing." So, yeah. Okay, and I mean, um, with that fight, the other thing that that was like a positive from it, even though it wasn't the result you wanted this, you know, this time, was the community support. I mean, um, I remember just on a personal note now, uh, I was actually working away in England on the night and stuff, but I was like constantly checking, like, you know, how's he doing, you know, reading yeah. the sport, reading, and then I watched it back later then. But like, yeah. um, you know, the support in Wales itself was massive. I mean, you know, all over social media, I heard that like all the pubs and clubs and everything, in, you know, in the valleys was all packed out and everything. Yeah. I mean, what sort of um, impact has it had, do you reckon, on your community? I mean, do you, do you get, like, stopped and noticed in the street and all that sort of thing now? or? Yeah, like, going back to that, like, um, like a lot of people couldn't get tickets because, obviously, it was a sold-out event, uh, probably one of the best events in the past, like, five, six years, I would say. Um, so it was the, – the tickets went on sale and they were gone in, the, like, a few hours and then they release a new more tickets and then maybe gone. So only I think I think only about a hundred people had tickets to come up and watch me. Uh but, but I had people messaging me all the time and my missus wrote it all down. I could have sold over like a thousand tickets. But obviously it was, yeah, I could I couldn't get tickets because I wasn't a match room fighter and things like that. But like so my father arranged like um all the pubs around here uh, they all got the fight um, so I was seeing posters of my face on all around the pubs and things like, uh, a couple, couple of weeks before sort of thing and uh, showing the fight to you and then I seen videos after of like all the it was like showing the pubs they were rammed and then chanting my name and things like I was it was unbelievable like hundreds well thousands probably thousands and obviously people watching in their homes as well I always get good support and um, I think that's the valleys I think we all support each other, and um, it was it was class. Like, yeah, yeah, I always get like noticed in the street and waving. I can't go for a run now. I'm running around. I'm like half the time. I'm just I'm trying to just leave my hand. <laughs> it's uh, it's good though because they I know they all they all want me to do good as well. It's um, bringing a, a positive thing back to the community, saying that um, just a- anyone can do it. As long as you put your mind to something, it doesn't matter where you're from. Do you know what I mean? It doesn't matter your, your background. You can you can always achieve something if you if you put your heart and your mind to it and uh, work hard enough. Do you mm. know what I mean? I agree. Yeah, hundred percent. And I I definitely think um I mean all through your career, mm-hmm. but like that fight in particular, I, I think that's the impact you've had. Like you know around Wales, I think a lot of people look. And I think, oh, you know, like Gavin's doing well. Like, like maybe I could do something as well. And I, I do, I do think um, that you ins- like inspire people like that. And I've I've seen it enough times. Mm-hmm. Um, and particularly like with you know with that fight, I think I think you'll find that like a lot of people thought, oh, like you know, look, he's doing well. He's like stuck at it and got the discipline. Maybe I could yeah. do something. Yeah. And I mean, and that was that was really nice to see, like the um, like the impact they had on you, but also the impact that you had. And, and I I do think you did prove like a lot of people wrong as well. Because yeah, yeah. even though like you didn't come out with you know like I say with the result or with you know with the belts, but like even just by being there in, in an arena that big, I mean you you know you showed. Um, you showed yeah, I'm pro- proving proving I'm 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 not just a I'm not just a Welsh title cha- um, champion. I'm not just at that level. I know I'm a lot I'm a lot higher. Do you know what I mean? I know I can compete at. Well, I, to be honest with you, I think I could beat the European champion now. I think yeah. the next fight, my next fight, is harder than the European title fight. I think yeah. the James Tennyson fight is a lot harder than the Potato fight. Yeah. If I'm honest. Well, well, let's talk about that. I mean, let's talk about that because obviously, James Tennyson fight, you know, is coming up. Obviously, it was due to happen. Um, it, well, uh, it was due to happen this, this week, wasn't it? I mean, you know. Oh yeah, so, this week. Sorry, yeah, this yeah. week. Yeah. Um, and obviously that's been moved. 
uh, and it's a bit up in the air, so we, we don't know what's happening there. But I mean, what are your preparations going like? I mean, how do you feel about you know about fighting Tennyson? I mean, you know, big puncher and everything like that. Um, just what's your thoughts on on the whole fight itself? Yeah, um, same again. Got off of the fight, and Tony was like, "He is made feel." He said, "He's made feel." He said, "There's, there's, if there's one fighter out there, he is made feel," and I. That, that gave me a bit of confidence as well, because obviously I know he's a massive puncher anyway, but I know I've got a big chin, but um, a good chin, sorry, not a big chin. <laughs> but um, yeah, um, it's, go, going off his boxing ability, he's not the best bo um, boxing ability, but he, he always got that one punch knockout. He's, he's, um, and he's been British, Commonwealth, European, um, world title challenger. So he's... he's he, he knows he knows the levels you've got to go through to get get to the top, and he's been in big fights before, so I think he got the experience on me. But I just think, I, I just think I'm too good for him. Like technically, I think I'm too good for him. Um, I but I think it's going to be a fantastic fight to watch. Um, it's just it's just when it's going to happen. I, um, I really don't know. I um, I think it was another. Um, scheduled date for was it June? Yeah, um, July. I, don't know, I, I think that yeah. July, but it's, it's, I, can't, I can't see that happening. Um, there's no way of getting sparring, and obviously I need to do get get um, certain types of sparring in. So with social distancing and things like that, I don't think it's going to happen anytime soon. But I I was training two weeks before there. I'm training full time. I've done the same again. Give up work. So I started training full time. I was flying as well. I was flying because I was already fit. I'm always in the gym. I'm like a gym rat. The same again. I was, I was flying, and then the lockdown came, and I was like, "Oh, gutted." Yeah. But I thought it was just gonna pass. I thought, "Oh, a couple of weeks now, and we'd be we'd be sound, and the fight will still go ahead, and everything else." But um, here we are. What was it like? Seven weeks is it? But yeah, I've been off work for like yeah. nine weeks. So, yeah. It's uh but like and Annie being in Cardiff as well, that's a bit of a bummer. I don't know where it's gonna be now. I don't know if it's gonna be behind closed doors. Um the boxing border they're on about no having no championship fights. So if I don't I don't know where this is gonna happen this year. Hopefully it'll happen um this by the end of the year. If it don't they're just gonna have to wait and uh, go from there. There's nothing we can do about it, it's not in our hands, so I just gotta stay fit. Um I got. I made myself a little gym in the garage. Put a bag up. I got overhead speedball, uh, normal speedball. Um, Tony's been doing, um, taking us like um, circuits and things. The guy, my SNC coach Richard Thomas, he's been doing um, FaceTime um, training videos with me. So it's just it's just staying taking over and staying active, and not putting too much weight on and uh, things like that. Really, it's not. Uh, it's not the ideal preparation, but I just you got to do what I got to do. That's it. Minutes, just so. staying ready, yeah, staying ready. And I mean, yeah. you know, I I know you don't think too far ahead, and you sort of you you take it sort of a fight at a time. But in the longer term, I mean, where where do you want to go? And I know you've got this tennis and fight, and I know, I mean, it was nice to see you bounce right back um, after the Joe Cordina fight, first round knockout of uh, I've done. Caesar, I think I said. Yeah, yeah, former know. Olympian as well. I was. Yeah, yeah. I, I was breaking myself over that fight. Obviously, coming off a loss, you're gonna have the, them nerves. Yeah. And um, I said to Chris, I said, "Oh, look, Chris, I, I want some decent. I don't want to be fighting a journeyman sort of thing again." She said, "Oh no, I gave you someone with a half decent record." I said, "No, Chris, I want someone tidy." And um, uh, the guy I've done Caesar just beat a seven area champion a couple of weeks before. Yeah, uh, ten stone as well. So I thought, yeah, that's a de decent scrap. But I knew I, w I would have won. I thought I was in for a tough night's work, mind. But I caught him. I caught him earlier on um, in the fight. I think it was fifty-five seconds. I knocked him out. Then caught him on top of the head, and I seen his leg go. So I thought, right, I'll go down to the body now. He starts dropping his hands, and I'll go back to the head. But I hit him with a body shot. He crippled. And I thought, right, he's gone there, and he like. As he was going across, hit him on top of the head again. He was just, he, he didn't want it. He didn't want it. He got up and uh, the ref said, do you want to come out? He was like, 
No. <laughs> okay. Uh, it's a good win, you know, it's a good bounce back win as well. But yeah, I mean, it was with your, yeah, with your future, like, um, I know we've got the tennis and fight coming up, you know, British title again um, yeah. and, and everything like that. But after that, I mean, you know, what are your sort of longer term ambitions, you know, maybe over like the next couple of years or, or something like that? Well, obviously, um, I want to put myself in position to be challenging for more titles. Um, obviously, this fight um, coming up now is for the British title fight. But like I, I said earlier on, it's, it's, it's good enough to be for the European title. We both beat Patera. I, I believe we both, I believe Jim, uh, James Tennyson would um, win and I believe I'd, I'd, I'd beat Patera as well. So with quite ease, I, I think we both beat him with quite ease. Um, so I think I could move straight on to European level, win this British title now, maybe um, challenge for a Commonwealth title or defend the British title and then go from there then. Um, the bigger fights, the bigger money fights. That's where I want to be. I want to be in the big fights on telly. I want to be entertaining people. That's where I want to be. Big money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I mean, just, just some general questions now, Gav. I mean, because that's, that's a good insight into your career and that's a good overview of mental preparation, physical preparation. So just some yeah. sort of general general questions now. I mean, you mentioned earlier that you you know you love to spar and, you know, spar is... Um, you know, one of your favourite parts of training. What would you say are like some of the best bars that, that you've had like in your career, like some of your favourite ones? Um, probably my favourite one was uh, the first time I sparred Gary Buckland. I, I loved that. We both just, and he, he was training for the Gavin Reese fight, the second fight, so he was fit. So, and I, like, I looked up to Gary he was former British champion as well, prize fighter champion. So it was just like a privilege to be in the ring with him. It was awesome. I loved, I loved that. And um, even now, um, in the gym, he always says he don't obviously no open sparring, but body spar. We always have um body sparring all the time when I'm training for a fight because I he's always fit, Gary. He's always he's always, he's in the gym more now in the, when he was fighting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's like. That was probably one of the favourite spa, one of my favourite spas, yeah, yeah. Okay, and um, what about? Okay, here's one that I was I was going to ask a bit later, but I'll ask now instead. Yeah. Yeah. Like, who would you say um, are some of the top prospects to watch, like in boxing? You know, it doesn't have to be in Wales; it could be the UK if you want, or um, international. Like, just just anyone you think is really going for it. Um. Obviously, you're going to mention my Jim Mitt, Jordan Withers. I think he's a phenomenal talent, to be honest with you. Um, I think he's going to go all the way. Um, the skill he possesses. And I've obviously, when he, he when I'm full-time training, I he's training alongside me and he, he's picking up how hard I'm training. Obviously, I haven't got his technical, uh, technical ability, but he's pick, I'm picking things up off him and he's picking things up off me, obviously, because... Um, the fitness side of it he's trying to keep up with me and then I take things from his game like technical stuff um, but yeah he's he's a real talent he's going to be something he's going to be special like they they've already dubbed him the Welsh Canelo so mm, he's yeah. he's really special um, I got another um, guy I used to train with as well um, Kieran Jones from Get to Get uh, Really good fight. Uh, he's turning pro either late this year or next year. Going to be a really, uh, really good prospect for play. So they the two, I'd say, is going to be the next best thing, sort of thing, coming up the wheels. Yeah. And yeah. Um, and what about um, favourite um, fighter from history? Now, I think I, I know the answer to this, but for everyone watching, um, you know, your favourite fighter from, like, from history? Um, Johnny Tapia. Is my like one person that when I first like started fighting and things like that, um, I I was looking through videos and then I come across cross him and I was like, he's good. So like, the old um the like the way he was like his character like on the way to the ring, the way he was fighting like it just gave me a buzz like when I was watching him. I just I just love him like even now I I go back 
and watch watch over his fights over and over and over. And yeah, he, he he's one of my favourites. And um, I like uh, I do like Miguel Cotto. I do really like watching his fights. Um, yeah, they got they got to be the two fighters. Uh, yeah, my two two top fighters, I'd say. Okay. And the last question, Gav, I mean, the last question I got now is, you know, if you had, like, advice for, um, you know, young young boxers now, I mean, people, you know, just starting out maybe, just, get, you know, just getting into the sport in the amateurs, um, or maybe not just boxing specifically, but, you know, maybe someone who wants to be successful, like, you know, in, in anything in life. I mean, you know, what advice would you, like, would you give to them? Um, to... To boxers, obviously, um, don't get disheartened. Yeah, when you're first starting off, you're gonna lose fights, um, but just keep training hard. Don't get, don't sway off with distractions, because I know I know it's like to get to get easily it's easily uh, led down the wrong path and things like that. Yeah, so just stay dedicated, um, train hard. And no, and 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 don't let no one tell you that you can't do something. Um, yeah, it's just. What was the other question you asked me? What was the other one? Um, well, it was just like advice for that, and then it's just it's sort of a two sided. So it would be like yeah, somebody who's getting wants to be successful in in anything. So it doesn't have to be boxing. It can be in life sort of thing. Um, yeah. I'm only 30, but, so I haven't succeeded yet. <laughs> but, oh, yeah, but you've done very yeah, well. Have, a, have a, like a, a positive outlook on life, even though uh, times uh, times do get hard, because I've been there. I've, I've been there, and I, 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 I've been in a tough situation um, a lot of times. Um, that's yeah, another good thing is get a good woman. Always get a good woman when you're going through life. Uh, make sure you sh- she steers you on the right path. Um, that's why I've I've stayed out of trouble and um, succeeded. I think is from from my misses. So, yeah, that, that's my my good uh, thing. Get get a good misses. <laughs> <laughs> who wants to be there? Just just uh, who loves you and not enough for the money sort of thing. Yeah, she wants to. Yeah, that's that's it. Yeah. Just anything for, like for the fans or. Um, people watching this, you'd like to say, like at all, or anything? Oh, like, yeah, um, obviously, I always get massive support, so I like to thank um, all the supporters. I know some, some people can't afford to come, um, but they always watch me on telly and supporting me. I know you're wishing me well, so that's brilliant. And uh, all the fans that do come, it's fantastic that they spend their hard earned money just to come to cheer me on. I still find it, I still find it mad now. People are still that. People want to come and watch me fight. It's weird. It's a weird feeling that, like, you're selling tickets and like they are spending. They work like I don't know many hours to buy this ticket to come and watch me fight. It's just, it's just a weird feeling. So yeah, I just like to thank all of my fans and obviously my family just for sticking by me and obviously my girlfriend through through like she don't see me at all. <laughs> like so, it's that's the hardest part about it. I think for her. Like it's it's no family like when I'm in camp, so yes, yeah, it's, it's thank her and she looks after me big time as well. She makes sure I don't don't want for nothing. She's uh, food on the table. I don't have to clean up. I don't have to do any clothes. It's just I can I can fully focus. Like seven to eight weeks on the camp, I don't have to do nothing. I come home, I rest, have my food straight back out the door. So yeah, that a a big. A big thank you goes to my missus, yeah. Obviously all my sponsors as well. I didn't want to... Uh, is it, I got a lot of sponsors. I am going to list at the moment. But yeah, every single one of them helped me. Obviously, uh, being a full-time um, fighter is very hard. I got, a, I got a mortgage. I got a young family. I got bills to pay. And uh, they ensure that I can give 100% when I'm training for a fight. So yeah, a big thank you to all my sponsors, every single one of them. Hey, well, I mean that's that's everything, Gav. I mean, we, you know, we've covered some absolutely some fantastic um, material there, yeah. um, and I think it'll really, you know, really help people watching. Um, I mean, that's that's the vision, you know, that I have, um, and uh, you know, I, I appreciate you 
so yeah. taking the time to have a chat with me today. You know, I appreciate it because I know you're very busy with training and no working. Problem, but no. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But it's no, no problem. But anytime, anytime. But I I enjoy doing things like this, and if if I'm inspiring youngsters, like um, it's always a good thing, isn't it? Yeah. Stay, stay, up, stay from the wrong path and uh, go down the right way in life. Sort of thing is, it's good. It's good. Ta -da. Ta -da. Ta -da. Ta -da.